I'm Ken Jones. I'm a former investigator, a criminalist from the Portland Police Bureau. Uh, for the last like 20 years of uh, my work at the Police Bureau, I was doing forensic work, and I got to see multiple, multiple crime scenes of different types. You know, homicides, arsons, officer-involved shootings, uh, a full gamut of different crime scenes that I've investigated and worked. Uh, primarily as a criminalist in Portland, latent fingerprint examiner, CSI work, you know, collection of evidence expanded into uh, trajectory external documentation. I got to experience a, a change in technology that occurred from standard photography, introduction of video, but it always seemed a bit incomplete. Like you couldn't capture every angle, you weren't limited in time, limited in ability to, to be in a certain position, even to put the camera there. So. When I got introduced to 3D point clouds and I saw that technology, it's like, that is really cool that you could view a crime scene from any angle. You could go back to it. It wasn't limited to the time while you were in scene to appreciate the three-dimensional space because you can see the, the distance relationship, what might have interfered to give its position. And that movement is part of what makes it so valuable uh, to the end viewer versus a 300 photographs that you have to sift through, rapidly you're able to get a positional awareness. When an analysis is done, we want to ensure that the documentation, th this one opportunity you have to capture that scene, is done right. Uh, many people will take pictures, but from those pictures you can't derive what was the distance that that shooter potentially fired that round from the sub subject that got struck. How many shooters were there? What was the positional relationship potentially of the victim when he got struck to the shooter's position? Was this an assassination attempt? Was this a, a passion crime of anger rounds just being fired, uh, menacing gone bad? All these account into sentencing. So they can be very important throughout this entire investigative process. It goes from the CSI collecting the evidence, the investigative team evaluating that evidence, visualizing it. Uh, you then end up with the prosecutorial team taking it on. The defense counsel now has access to this digital twin. It has huge value that uh, standard photography, video recording through the 1990s, you know, we moved into the 2000s, that people were like, those were good, but they were just a little incomplete you realize that you have that one shot to get it right. Uh, but when you hear testimony, you hear oral testimony from these, these witnesses, victims, suspects, you can now filter their statements through that point cloud. And as an investigative team, and ultimately the trier of fact, a jury, a judge, can now say, this person's not lying. They may not have all the facts, they have a partial truth but what they said makes sense. Now, when I combine it with another person's testimony, um, that's gonna be added to it. So multiple people doing their testimony can now be filtered through that point cloud, that 3D storytelling tool that I really advocate for. I'm a passionate person about that because uh, having been in, the, in that hot seat in a grand jury room, um, I wanna give officers or victims, uh, community members, the ability to utilize that tool uh, to tell their story. You know, technology has advanced, uh, and whenever you're going to be deploying this technology, I really am looking forward to something that's going to work all the time and easy to operate. Single button push, not overly complex to set up. Anybody can grab it from a patrol officer to the criminalist to a detective, can check it out and go capture a scene. And it, the ability for it to be used differently than just a standard tripod, mounting it maybe in the ceiling to, to capture a uh, very complex scene where you have to lift clothing off to find things buried underneath like an archaeological dig. Equipment that the criminalists are going to want to be using in this day and age, we want that to be an intelligent piece of equipment that reduces on-scene time, that, that's thinking for itself. Uh, technology like Viz, this is where the cameras in the scanners track its location uh, without human input and just knows where the scan was captured from. And that allows us to link the data together without human interaction. Now, we can fix it, change it, and alter it with, with programs on a tablet. We can see it and share it. Uh, this speeds up that entire capturing and actually has been revolutionary in the forensic uh, deployment of 3D scanning. Now, all of these technology that we get has to be boiled into a, a program that's very simple to use, like Register 360, uh, drag and drop functionality of, of data into it, uh, automations of registrations, register all the, the data, pull it together into one big model space. 
that's then shared and view the analysis that's done by your experts, your, your team that have been working, working off the single truth, the digital twin of that crime scene. And so you wanna basically capture that and share that on scene. So it's a wonderful thing like having Cyclone Field 360 where you have an iPad or a phone and you can actually take your initial scans and on scene, take it into the command post and share that with the investigative team. So the criminalist side of it can still continue working with that scanner, it's freed up, and the investigative team now has access to that scene where normally they would be waiting for the, the investigators to be finishing it up uh, for the initial documentation phase. And um, these new technologies that are out there are drastically changing the way uh, investigators are getting the scientific data, this documentation that's done through a 3D scan. Uh, you're going to need these tools in order to have a successful forensic team capture the data that's necessary to help your community. Thank you.